Trey Gowdy just revealed the truth behind why Comey refused to prosecute Hillary, and it's worse than we imagined. Representative Trey Gowdy has hinted that there may be more to Hillary Clinton's corruption than we know. In an interview with Fox News, Gowdy explained his thinking on former FBI Director James Comey and why the Clinton Foundation may be a hotbed of payoffs and money laundering. Representative Gowdy addressed Comey's July decision to not prosecute Hillary Clinton over her email practices. Here is some of what Gowdy said. Comey had access to additional classified information and that I am convinced that left him with no other choice than to make the decision he made in July. There is enough for her and the entire government to be brought down. People do not realize how enormous this whole situation actually is. The problem is with the Clinton Foundation, as I mentioned, which you should just imagine as a massive spider web of connections and money laundering, implicating hundreds of high-level people. I can't believe these revelations. Gowdy is saying that Comey didn't prosecute Hillary Clinton because it would mean the FBI would, have, uh, would be pitted against the entire D.C. establishment. That's outrageous. I really don't care what happens to the FBI. The lid needs to be blown off this no matter the fallout. This is the only way the swamp can truly be drained. President Trump needs to take action now and clean house once and for all. You can watch the whole interview here. FBI director. No announcements so far for Jim Comey's old job. My next guest removed himself from the White House shortlist, saying that he doesn't believe he's the right man for that job. Congressman Trey Gowdy of the Intelligence and Judiciary Committee joins us now. Good to see you uh, this evening, Congressman yes, Gowdy. Thank you for being Thank here. You. Um, yes, why don't you get your thoughts on this breaking news first, and then we'll get to some of that. What's your reaction to this story in the Times? Uh, well, I've been in a classified skiff with Director Pompeo for the last two hours, Martha, so I'm catching up a little bit. I read the story. Obviously, I want to see the memo. Obviously, I want to talk to Director Comey to determine how contemporaneous his recording of the conversation was, but, but also importantly, not just what was said, but what did Director Comey hear? How did he take it? Um, and, and that can only be done, with all due respect to the New York Times, that can only be done by looking at the memo and talking uh, to Director Comey. Yeah, the New York Times in this report does not have the memo in their hands. It was read to them over the phone. Um, so that in and of itself, you, you know, as you point out, it's very difficult to get the context if you can't read the whole thing. Well, if you go back to, uh, to, to, to criminal procedure, which is my background, uh, there, there's a doctrine called the rule of completeness. Whenever part of a document is introduced, you've got to be able to look at the entire document. Your viewers and my fellow citizens deserve to see the entire context of whatever conversation may or may not have taken place. And, quite frankly, uh, Director Comey deserves an opportunity to come tell us how he heard it, what he heard, how pervasive it was, and how much of the conversation that segment consumed. So, uh, we have a story. There's a reason newspaper articles are not admissible in any courtroom in the United States. Uh, I'm not knocking the reporter. The reporter does good work. Um, but, but we're a long ways from a conviction, the fact that we simply have a headline in the New York Times. So in terms of the you know, calls for a special prosecutor, an independent prosecutor, this is going to only fuel those. Do you think there's any reason to go that route at this point? Uh, I have been resistant in the past, but I've been open-minded. Um, special counsel is only appropriate if there's an allegation of a crime. Um, and there are several crimes uh, potentially at play here. The hacking of the DNC is a crime. I don't hear people talking about that that much. The dissemination of classified information is a crime. Uh, General Flynn's comments uh, uh, to the FBI may or may not constitute a false statement to a law enforcement official. Um, and I've heard allegations that this rises to the level of obstruction of justice. So you do have a sufficient evidentiary basis for a crime, but the other half 
The other half of the equation is whether or not the Department of Justice or any of the 94 U.S. attorneys can do the job themselves. And I have not been persuaded that all 94 U.S. attorneys in our country, many of whom are women and men who have nothing to do with politics, are incapable of fairly adjudicating this fact pattern. All right, one last question on this, and I want to get to the next subject with you. Um, if James Comey believed that what the president said to him was an effort to obstruct justice, you know, to, to get him to table this investigation of Mike Flynn, would he be obligated to, to let the Department of Justice know right away? I, I don't think so. I, I'm probably in a minority here. I, I, I don't think Director Comey reported President Obama the four different times he prejudged the outcome of the investigation. Um, and there were four different times. Uh, yeah, Director Comey has not been afraid in the past to say no to presidents and attorney generals. Um, he did it when he was with the Department of Justice. I think if he felt like this was an effort to influence him, he knows exactly what to do. Uh, but I won't know that until I have a chance to ask him. All right, one thing we're left with still in all of this is an empty seat at the head of the FBI. And your name was on that short list. You asked for it to be taken off. Why? Why do you think you're not the right person for that job? I think the country can do better uh, than me, quite frankly. Um, I did have 20 years in the courtroom, Martha. That's the best job I've ever had. Um, but the reality is, uh, in this current political environment, I am known more for being asked to chair one committee than I am the 20 years I spent in a courtroom. Uh, and my first rule of friendship is don't ask friends uh, to do things that are not in their best interest. And I. I the Senate confirmation process would be dreadful and it'd be miserable. And, and quite frankly, I think the country deserves a woman or a man who is devoid of, of political taint. And, and whether I like it or not, uh, whether I wish I could wash it off or not, I have been in politics for six years. I think I could be fair, uh, but I don't know that I could get the job and I don't know that I could convince a sufficient number of my fellow citizens that I would be fair. And quite frankly, they deserve an FBI director that is above reproach. We're just learning that Jason Chaffetz uh, is saying, the congressman is saying that he has a subpoena pen uh, hanging over this memo and he would like to see it. Any reaction to that? Um, I don't know that he would have to subpoena it. Um, I thought he was recuperating from surgery. I'm glad he was doing better. Um, and he found a subpoena pen. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know that you would need to subpoena this memo. Um, if it was read to the New York Times, I would certainly hope the FBI would read it to members of Congress. So hopefully it doesn't come to that. I want to go back a little further in the Jim Comey story. You put out a statement when he was fired saying that he had a very tough job and access to the facts that perhaps the rest of us did not is the way that you put it. Um, you know, a lot of people have said that the, his performance on July 5th when he came out and said, you know, we have all this evidence, extreme carelessness on the part of Hillary Clinton, and yet um, we are not going to prosecute her. Um, was that news conference enough in and of itself to let him go, do you think? Uh, no, uh, and I think when history knows the full fact pattern that led Director Comey to have that July news conference, I mean, I think what your viewers know is a meeting on the tarmac uh, between the spouse of a suspect uh, of, of the suspect of a or the target of an investigation, the Attorney General. Um, what your viewers don't know, Martha, and what Jim Comey frankly can't tell them because it's classified, and I can't tell them because it's classified. There were a lot of other reasons that Jim Comey decided to take that decision upon himself. And I think history, and I've had plenty of differences with Jim Comey, I want to be really clear about that, lots of them. But I think history is going to be much kinder to Jim Comey in that July press conference than the Democrats were when he had it. I, I think he had access to information that because he is a stand-up guy and he's not going to disseminate classified information, although God knows everybody else is, he's not going to do it even if it casts him in a negative light. So all your viewers see is this meeting on the tarmac. Jim Comey had access to additional information that I am convinced left him with no other choice than make the decision he made in July. So you're saying he had no advocate. choice, there was pressure on him to no, not no. prosecute Hillary Clinton? Is that what you're no, suggesting? No. No, I think he had access to information and he wanted to safeguard the integrity of the investigation and the integrity of the process. And I probably ought to just leave it right there. But now I'm not talking about pressure. I don't think the guy I, I don't think the guy feels pressure. I think he wanted the public to have confidence in the investigation and the outcome. Even though I disagreed with the outcome, he wanted you to have confidence in the process. He had access to information that your viewers don't have, and they may not ever have because it is classified. 
But trust me when I tell you this, Martha, I know what it was. Uh, and I have been a critic of Jim Comey in the past, but he made the only decision he could have made with respect to appropriating that decision away from the Department of Justice and making the decision himself. And history will be a hell of a lot kinder to him than the Democrats were at the time. I, I, I only take away from that that you're suggesting that there were more entanglements between the Clintons and perhaps the Justice Department than everyone understands. You're very perceptive. Okay. Thank you. Chair Gatton. Oh, you have Good to see you, sir. We'll take some more on that you. later. Good to see you, sir. Yes, All right. So here. Many entanglements. There are many entanglements. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching.